And today we will look at the recent big addition to HenuFox Online, which is the ability to track products by serial numbers, lot numbers, and expiration dates. So if I go to inventory and into the new section called serial slash lot numbers, on the left here we have your products, the list of products, and on the right you will have this set of options which lets you choose how this product is going to be tracked and enable tracking for it. So as I said, HennyFox allows tracking by serial numbers, lot numbers, and expiration dates. And out of these three, five different combinations are possible, which are serial numbers, serial numbers and expiration dates, lot numbers, lot numbers plus expiration dates, and also the expiration date alone. So it would take too much time to cover all five of these in detail, so I'm just going to show a couple, and the rest work similarly, so hopefully you can figure them out. There's also this second uh, choice, the auto pick option, and for example, if I choose the serial number, you see it gives me only one choice, first in, first out, that is uh, FIFO order. But if expiration date is in the picture, there's also the second choice, first expired, first out, which predictably make this auto pick function prioritize the stock that is going to expire the earliest. So let me quickly enable tracking for all these products that I'm going to use for demonstration and uh, then we can proceed to something more interesting. And by the way, all these products are completely fictional, so never mind their names or descriptions. So these next few I'm going to set up for serial number tracking. And these three I will track by lot numbers and expiration dates. And I guess I'll set them to first expired, first out. So the next logical step after enabling tracking for a product would be to tell HennyFox about the lot numbers or serial numbers you already have on hand, if any. You may have noticed we currently have 13 of this item on hand and it also sh it's also showing this unassigned quantity of 13 and what that means is every every one of those 13 pieces is expected to have some lot number and an expiration date since this is how we have set up this product to be tracked but Handy Fox doesn't know what any of those numbers are but we are going to correct that presently by clicking assign numbers and I'm going to enter some lot numbers for this item and since this is all sandbox data anyway I'm just going to make up some numbers for the sake of speed the sequence of actions here is this first I enter a lot number and click on the plus icon so this line gets added to the list and now I can also set an expiration date for it and enter the quantity that I currently have on hand from this particular lot and you may notice that uh, right now the unassigned quantity is only 8 so now HennyFox knows what the lot number is for 5 of our 13 pieces and in the same fashion I'm going to enter the rest of them and now you can see the unassigned quantity has disappeared and all our items are now accounted for. And I've been entering these lot numbers from the keyboard but there's also this field which you can set the cursor to and then use a barcode scanner to enter those serial or lot numbers by scanning barcode labels. And here we can choose a different site and enter the same information for other inventory sites that exist in our system but I think I'm going to resort to the default main site for now. And when you're when you done, just click Save. So now let me quickly do the rest of these items. Uh, 
Okay, so now all items that I'm tracking by lot numbers are accounted for. Uh, now let's look at these uh, items here that, are, that I'm tracking by serial numbers. So this looks much more simplistic because there are only serial numbers to assign and nothing else. And for serial numbers, uh, the quantity is pretty much always one because they are supposed to be unique for every piece. There are some situations when a serial number can be listed in your system with the quantity of zero or even negative one, and those are required to keep the inventory data consistent, but those should be treated as anomalies. So I think you get the idea at this point, so let me quickly do all of these off camera and I'll get back to you in just a second. And now that we've done all that and have some data about serial and lot numbers in the system, it lists all of them for any given item in this right panel. And uh, you can view the combined data from all sites or for every single site individually. You can search this list and you can also print all this data as barcode labels. So let me show you briefly how this works. So here you can have a number of fields uh, that will be included or omitted on the barcode labels. And the barcode labels themselves look like this. So in my case, it's printing the product code, the lot number, and the expiration date as three separate barcodes. And now we are finally getting to how this whole system applies to transactions such as sales orders, invoices, inventory transfers, and so on. And again, it would take way too much time to go over every single transaction type that HandyFox supports. So I will just demonstrate a couple of them. And after that, you should have no problem with the rest since this works more or less the same with all of them. And I suggest we start with counting sessions. Counting sessions are used to enter the results of physical inventory counts into the system. Let me start a new inventory count and uh, for the sake of argument let me add uh, first an item that I'm not tracking by serial or lot numbers and with such items it is plain and simple. Uh, you just enter a new quantity for it and that's it. And uh, with items that are tracked by serial or lot numbers it's a little more involved. So for this item, as you can see, we have this green arrow icon, which reveals a detailed list of lot numbers in this case, which we must populate. So as you count inventory, you add lot numbers to this list, and you enter new quantities for them that are physically present in storage. And then you should also enter the total count separately in this field. And this lets the system know if any, uh, any part of the inventory should be listed as unassigned quantity here. And uh, as a reminder, the unassigned quantity is the number of pieces that the system, uh, for which the system does not know what their lot numbers or serial numbers are. Uh, in our case, uh, right now everything adds up together perfectly, but uh, let's just say that as a result of this physical count, we are missing two pieces from our inventory. So instead of 15 pieces, we only have 13. And uh, yeah, if you want to remove some lot number from your inventory entirely, just don't include it on this list. So after the inventory count is applied, you will be left with only what you have added here. And you can also add a brand new lot number by typing in this search field here and then selecting this element that says new. But I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, this is good as it is. And also let me show uh, how this looks for an item that's tracked by serial numbers. And in this case it's uh, much simpler since you only need to add the serial numbers that you have and uh, the quantities for them are always going to be one. Uh, if you don't have a particular serial number just don't include it on this list and uh, again to add a new serial number you can do this 
and uh, I don't have many serial or lot numbers so I can uh, I'm comfortable with just finding them in this list here but if you need to add a lot of them at once you can use this button add from list and then just mark a large number of them and add them all at once and so in this example here um, I'm missing one serial number that I thought I had but instead I'm adding in brand new serial number so the total quantity is not changing in this case and as the second example let's try fulfilling a sales order by doing the procedure known as picking and packing only this time we will be entering the serial number or lot number information as we go through it so this is our sales order that we are going to pick let me click start picking so we can get a pick list for it and uh, all four items on this pick list are being tracked so we can expand the details for them and suddenly we see a very familiar list so this item is being tracked by serial numbers and uh, like the last time first we need to enter the total quantity in this case it's the total quantity we are going to pick and uh, you've already seen how this list uh, is formed and populated so let me instead show you the auto pick function that I mentioned earlier when I click this auto pick button uh, it automatically populates the list with the right quantity of items based on either the first in first out order or the expiration dates depending on what's enabled for any given product for this one it's first in first out and the second item here is also tracked by serial numbers so I can do the same for it and then this item is tracked by lot numbers and expiration dates and uh, I actually have it set to first expires first out for the auto pick for this item so let's test how that works and uh, right here I assume it's picked uh, uh, the earliest expiration date that we have in the system. Let's test that. Yep, appears to be the case. And for the last item, let me just enter everything manually. And in this case, I can, for example, uh, draw from two different lots to fulfill this position. And uh, when all your numbers add up and everything is good, uh, the list and the item itself are highlighted in green. And that's how you know that uh, all your numbers check out and this, the system will let you save the transaction. So let's proceed to the next stage. And with packing, uh, you have no uh, real influence over what numbers are going to be. The numbers were defined uh, during the previous stage so during packing as always you just uh, uh, check off uh, every item as packed or not packed individually. And I guess I can also show how the backing slip looks with all the lot numbers and serial numbers so you can see it lists all the serial numbers for the appropriate items and uh, for these other two items it lists lot numbers and expiration dates along with quantities for each of them and uh, this will look similarly on uh, other transactions that uh, support uh, storing uh, that support information about serial or lot numbers alright and finally let's look at some examples in HandyFox online mobile app uh, and uh, we will actually use a barcode scanner to do some tasks in it so we can test how that works as well Okay, and now let's look at the same examples on a mobile device with HandyFox mobile app. So, the first example was inventory counting, so let's go over there. And this time, rather than using 
boxes with label stickers for uh, barcode scanning. I just uh, printed out some of the uh, some of the labels I showed earlier with uh, lot numbers on them and so on. So I'll be using those for scanning. And uh, let's see. So this is the item I have labels for. So let's use. Uh, let's try counting that one. And as usual, first you need to enter the total new count, and then you can go into these details. And uh, you can, uh, just like in the web app, you can add lot numbers and uh, enter quantities for them manually, but let's try doing everything with a barcode scanner this time. So I'm going to take this uh, printout with labels that I made, and let's just uh, start scanning them. then one more and the last one okay and this is uh, this is everything we need I think all right and uh, just not to make this video too long I hope uh, this uh, gets the point across how everything is working as far as inventory counting and let's uh, look at picking and packing now I'm gonna go into open orders from here and uh, I've cloned the sales order that we were picking and packing in the web app so this one is the exact copy of the sales order we saw previously so let's start picking it and uh, we're gonna have to pick it partially because I don't have the labels for all these items but I have uh, labels for two of them so this is the second page I've prepared yeah so let me st I actually let me start with this one so suppose we have two pieces and uh, this is one and it's already there and uh, this is the second serial number there we go and then uh, the second item we're going to pick is right here and uh, let's see how many is on the order three pieces okay so again entering the total quantity going into the details and uh, uh, I'm I want to I want to pick from the last lot that we uh, that we had uh, on the list because I know that one has uh, a lot of pieces still remaining in it. Okay, so I've picked three. Hit OK, and uh, at this point we can save it as a partial pick list. And now we can pack it and to pack it I'll just uh, scan the uh, not the lot codes not the serial numbers but the product codes for these two items uh, let's see are they both green yes okay so now everything is packed as well oh, that's that's right uh, apparently my company settings don't allow me to skip uh, the signature so I'll just enter something and there we go order fulfilled okay and this is everything I wanted to talk about today I tried not to make this video too long so it doesn't cover some of the nuances of this tracking system but I hope it still gives you a good heads up on serial and lot numbers in HandyFox Online well, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.